Uh, so welcome all of you and have a good morning. So before we start, uh, uh, we are going to discuss about Python in today's session as well as in the few sessions to come next. I am Amit Ranjan and I have been working as a, a big data consultant and developer mostly. So I have been working in Python, Java and Scala along with uh, uh, frameworks of big data for last uh, more than five years. So let's uh, practice uh, some Python today. Uh, we have already discussed lots of uh, stuff. Okay, so this is uh, uh, my Jupyter console. And uh, I go to new Python 3. This is a new workbook. Okay, so the first thing we are going to discuss today is about uh, uh, classes, uh, and then we'll also talk about inheritance and many other things. But uh, let's uh, start our discussion with classes. And it's uh, needless to say it's uh, very, very simple. Classes uh, basically are the concept of uh, object oriented programming, like uh, Java and C++, where you create class and uh, you create objects. So basically classes are, and you must might be aware of these things, like classes are essentially a blueprint or uh, basically it's a, a kind of a skeleton of uh, some kind of, uh, which provides some kind of abstraction. So there are many other terms used for the same, like you may be hearing the term something like container because they contain member variables, they contain functions container in the sense they contain the member variables and uh, they also contain uh, functions which work on the uh, member variables python has got uh, support for object oriented programming python supports classes python supports objects Python supports encapsula encapsulation, overriding. Python supports inheritance. It's not purely object oriented in the sense like if you compare with Java, uh, like in uh, Python, you have got support for multiple inheritance as well. So you can inherit from two classes in a single class. So this is not there in, in Java, so, but, uh, this is there in Python. And uh, then there are concepts of overriding, overloading, all these things are obviously in place. And there are abstract classes. So we'll discuss some of them today. So these support are there uh, present. First of all, Python is, uh, we, in the first session we discussed about functional programming as well as uh, object oriented programming. So Python has got support for both. It performs your functional programming as well as it provides uh, object oriented programming. So I'm going to uh, talk about one exa a couple of examples for functional programming, how Python is functional programming. So in support of that, I'm going to give you one example, a couple of examples. And then we will talk about how Python supports object oriented programming by classes objects. So I'm not going to go into larger details of classes and objects because you already might be aware of, but we will have certainly have a look over there. So in functional programming, what happens is, remember one thing, we talked about some philosophies in the first session. So ultimately one of the philosophy is, the functions are internally objects. Uh, every function you observe internally, it is uh, an object and it can be uh, referenced using uh, different member, different variables, obviously, because it's an object. So it, just like you have any object for uh, storing any value, you have uh, an object for function called as function objects. And this function object performs some kind of operation and it can be referenced using multiple variables. That is perfectly fine. So there can be many variables 
which can refer to this function we will see we will see to this the second thing is since they are objects so they can be uh, passed as an argument these things are not there in in java especially java before 8 these things are there in java 8 somehow but before that there was no support for functional programming so they can be passed as an argument to a function and this is something we have seen right like if you talk about the map function so map function takes a list uh, or basically a sequence of some numbers or some items as a second argument and as a first argument it takes a function now this is the function which applies to all the elements of the sequence so a function is passed as an argument to the other function we have seen this not only map but we have also seen about filter uh, we have talked about reduce which accept a function as an argument and you will see these things quite often as you proceed with uh, your uh, training uh, with in in a statistics and machine learning so this is very common one more thing about functional programming the sign the the outcome of fun being functional programming is uh, functions can be returned as well so if you are coming from object oriented design this may be something new that a function can return another function let us try to talk about uh, i'm going to show you uh, does anyone remember how to create a function suppose we want to create a function like add so we can pass two arguments x and y and uh, what it will do is uh, it will uh, return x and y x plus y uh, as simple as that and uh, similarly if you want to create a function called subtract uh, x uh, and y uh, most of the time you won't create uh, these trivial functions these are just to understand the behavior and most of the time you will be creating a function of any operation which uh, frequently repeats itself so that you won't don't want to code it again and again most of the time some of the time you may want to create uh, uh, maintain the modularity so you create functions for a specific purpose so this will return x minus y so these are the two functions which we are going to create and then we are going to print add of three and five is equal to percentage d then percentage we are going to call add of three and five and similarly print subtract of two and ten is equal to okay something like this so let's try to run this and see what do we get you see the add of three and five is this subtract of two and ten is this <clears throat> perfect that's not a problem what i wanted to display here is you can simply make like uh, uh, add var is equal to add well this is something like a, a variable assignment now add and add var both point to the same object so this is the function object whose name is add so you can understand this okay so i can show you here suppose we create a function called as add we make it x y and we return x plus y now if you perform add of 3 5 it will be 8 now here you make add var is equal to add and now if you do add var 3 and 5 you will get the same result because the add and add var here both are pointing to the same reference variable sorry same object so there is a function object and add and add var both are pointing to the same function object so this is what i was trying to show the second thing is a function can return a function right so how is this uh, how can we talk about this 
a function returning another function suppose you want to have uh, some kind of uh, see now try to see what happens here we are having two functions add and subtract oh and then we are having our function called as get func what happens is if we do f is equal to get func it will take an argument x so x can be plus or minus suppose i pass the argument as plus so now f will be your add function it will perform add operation like if you do 10 and 20 it will give you 30 whereas if you do f is equal to get func and pass minus in this case f will perform subtraction now if you do f 10 and 20 you will get minus 10 so the idea behind this uh, concept is it's again one of the object oriented uh, functional programming concept this get func is a function which is returning either add or subtract and these add and subtract in turn they are the functions so a function can return another function a function can accept a function so you can play with the, uh, these functional programming concepts now i'm going to talk about object oriented concepts supported in python it's uh, fairly simple to do the first there are a few things to keep in mind okay anyone who is not aware of classes objects please let me know now i hope you do have a basic idea of what are classes and objects so to create a class the syntax is very simple class and then you give the name of the class so usually this is the structure we follow we start with a capital letter for the class name usually by convention then you give colon and then after one indentation you start to discuss the structure of the class what a class can have a class can have functions and then there are two types of function basically one is the private function and one is the public function uh, i hope you know what is there so the first thing is the functions which are inside class a function can be outside class a function can be inside a class it depends on how you choose uh, what is uh, your design how you are trying to structure it so a function which is inside a class is uh, called a method and a function which is outside a class that's simply a function so a method is a function which is inside class it can be private or public uh, there is nothing uh, uh, kind of access modifier just like java but if you start the name of a function with uh, two underscores then it means it is a private function and uh, else it is a public function by default then every class has got uh, uh, some member variables which you don't need to specify so suppose this class has got uh, a method called as def uh, say get age where you want to return the age of uh, a particular uh, object suppose this class represents your employee data so here you can simply say return whatever is the age so age of what a class you know this suppose a class is just like a template it's it does not contain any data so if you have got a class there is no data associated with the class 
what happens is class defines some kind of a structure and then there are different objects which follow the same structure of the class so it is the objects which have the actual data class is simply a template it it is like a blueprint it's like a pattern with no data at all so in every object has got a reference to its own data using self if you are coming from java background self is like a this keyword whenever you see something like self it means the value specific to the object which is accessing it here if you return age so you have to specify self self dot age so and every function or sorry every method has the first argument as self it's not like self is not a keyword self is like a conventional uh, name we give you can give any name you can give xyz you can give class cls anything so self is like a self reference every method every method has the first argument as self is self means self reference the specific to the object and uh, this is uh, passed automatically we need not to pass it is passed uh, implicitly whenever you call this function so you will be calling this method by something like this get age like this only this you this self reference is passed automatically you need not to worry about passing it similarly you can create a function like a set age where you can set the age so here the first reference is always self and the second reference suppose it is age so you can what you can do is you can set the value self dot age is equal to age semicolon is not mandatory you you may or may not give that <clears throat> then in order to create the object you first give the name of the class then you give the reference of the object and then no sorry sorry name of class is not required because type is not required you just give the object reference and then you specify name <clears throat> and that's it this will create an object a new keyword is uh, not required which is required in many other situations and languages <clears throat> so let us try to see this so if i go to this is my jupiter you know that suppose i'm going to create a class called as uh, emp or oh, sorry employee let's make it employee and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a method that is get uh, let's start with uh, set age the first will be self and second will be the age and then and then we can create uh, a function called as get age which can simply have only one argument of the self reference and uh, we will return self dot age okay and that's fairly simple now we are going to create a uh, an uh, object for this so what we will do is we will create like emp obj1 is equal to employee and uh, we can say emp obj1 dot get uh, h so let's try to see this so if you run employee object has no attribute h obviously so because age has not been set so what we'll do is let's try to set age as 10 and then try to get the age so now if you see 10 is the age because we were trying to get the age without setting it similarly what we can do is we can create uh, one more object say emp object 2 
and here the age can be set as 20 so every object can have its own value so we can print you see the first employee has the age 10 second employee has age 20 not a problem that's fairly straight and simple uh, is this fine to all i mean i'm not sure how much programming idea you have it's uh, a very simple example to create a class create an object set and get the parameters of the object set age is basically a method if you see def this def means it is a method what is a method a function which is inside the class is called a method so set age is basically a function which is inside the class employee you cannot access the set age outside it outside the class basically if you try to uh, run something like uh, set age 10 then this is not going to work you can run this and you will get like set age is not defined right so if we try to use something like employee dot set age 10 and if you try to run this you will get like it is uh, missing the arguments because it's uh, it's not something like a static uh, method it's your uh, this is your employee class an object of this class can use this method or run execute this method if you want to create uh, uh, some methods which are static there are other ways to do that okay so now the thing is suppose an employee has got name as well so what we'll do is uh, you can you can set and get the name as well so like you can like specify set name okay so this is how you can specify the name as well <clears throat> so and then you can print the first employee has name has a name is equal to this and age is equal to this so the name will be your emp obj one dot get name so this is how the first and uh, second employee will have their you can print their name and age so one employee has name abc one employee has name uh, pqr and we are setting the name as well as the age so if you try to run this the result will be huh? mm. what's that employee object has no attribute age oh sorry employee 2 should have set it here so you see first employee has named this and is this and second employee has got name and age so you can change that as well so that is perfectly fine now what i want to do is the time this is the place i am creating an object and similarly this is the place where i am creating the object i don't want to use these two things i want to make it quite short so what i want to do is whenever an object is created i want to specify the name as well as the age of that particular object so every time an object is created i should have the luxury to specify the name as well as age so do you know which kind of a structure or what kind of uh, uh, element helps like uh, in this use case whenever you want to access some of the code or some of the functionality the moment you create an object how to do that in any other programming language basically i want to run some kind of function 
whenever an object is created. Do you know something called as constructor? Okay, so basically constructor is essentially a function. It's a method. It is present inside the class, uh, just like any other method, but it has got some special uh, specialties. The thing is, the function is executed whenever the moment object is created. That function is called as constructor. If a constructor is a concept of many object oriented programming language in Python underscore underscore in it. This is the constructor underscore underscore inside any class. If you see this function, it, it has got obviously self. Self is the reference to the same object. I will talk again about self. So this is the constructor. So what we can do is we can simply have a constructor def and the moment uh, what we can do is we can uh, if okay we can specify the name and age at the time of creation and what we'll do is we'll specify self dot name self dot age is equal to name age you can write this in two lines also but what will happen is self dot name will become equal to name and self dot age will become equal to age. Uh, if you want, if you don't like this approach, you can write the same in two different lines as well. Whatever suits you, it's perfectly fine. So now what you can do is you can, uh, whenever you are creating the object, you don't need to specify that set name or get name. You may want, you can use that, but this will be quite easy way if you like it. So what will happen is you are creating an object and at the time of the object creation, you specify the name as well as age. So this object creation, the name and age, they will be passed to the constructor as the name and as the age. Uh, you and this self is automatically passed. You need not to pass it. So now if you try to run this uh, program, you will get the same result. So the code has become short. But the disadvantage is you are not able to create an object like this. Suppose if you want to create an object like this simple you don't want to pass any argument. Oh, sorry. Something like this. Now, if you run this code, you will get error like init missing two required positional arguments, name and age. So what it says is the constructor which you have specified, the constructor requires two arguments, name as well as age. But while creating the object, you are not providing any argument. So you see in it has got some problem. It two required arguments are missing. The name as well as age. So these two are missing here. So what you can do is you want to have some kind of default behavior. That is, if an object is created without any argument, then something should happen. And if the object is created with arguments, then something else should happen. So you can create something like one more in it, which has got only one reference, only one argument. And what it does, it does nothing. It simply says pass. Or you can pass it a default argument like self dot name is equal to empty string and self dot age is equal to zero. Like these are the default values if the object is created without any argument. So you can call it NA or you can say uh, unknown like this. Now, if you try to run this code, uh, 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 just a moment.
okay it looks like the overloading is not working here okay what we can do is we can simply give the default values here so uh, it looks like the overloading was not working here so what we did is you can see in the init or this is the constructor we have passed the name argument and age argument along with their default values like the default value for age is zero and the default value for name is unknown it simply means when you are creating an object like here if you do not pass the value name will get a known value and age will get zero value so you can see the first employee has the name unknown and age zero second employee has the name pqr and age 20 something like this so you should be able to till till now you should be able to understand about how to create a class how to create object how to work with uh, functions inside class uh, which are called methods and uh, what are constructors so these things should be clear as of now what is the use of self argument in these class methods so if we use constructor then no need for setting the values uh what see first of all in the constructor there are things which you can use at the time of object creation so they are both ways either you specify in the constructor or outside constructor so in this example finally what we have observed if you use the constructor uh, you need not to have something like set age or set name you can remove that you can remove them so these things can be removed that's fine okay any other question constructor is only for initial object creation yes yeah and the one is about the self yeah what happens is hmm, okay in java we have got this keyword which is very identical so i'll tell you suppose you have got a class and uh, class has got uh, members member variables like name and age so there can be different objects of the same class and every object will be having name and age name and age name and age and the values of name and age can be different it will be it can be different for different objects so the point here is if you call something like get age on any object suppose this is your object referenced by emp obj1 this is your object referenced by emp obj2 and uh, this is your object referenced by emp obj3 so if you call something like emp obj1 dot get age you should get the age of the same employee i mean the same object you should get this particular age so in order to uh, get this age you use self self dot age basically you return it you say something like return self dot age so self dot age means self is a pointer to the uh, to the object basically to the to the, to the calling object uh, to the calling object the object which is calling the method is it clear okay so please do one thing uh, either you can launch your uh, jupiter as as in here or you can launch your python on the command prompt whichever suits you both are fine this is my python shell we are going to do some activities here python shell is i think a bit convenient but 
i'm going to give you some uh, some small bits of uh, problems so that you can practice and start and get it running so first of all you have to do is create a class called uh, item and uh, this class should have the constructor should uh, initialize the price and basically the id name and price of the item a sample example is uh, there default values of id name and price should be minus 1 na minus 1 respectively so just and you should also have the getters then create the getters getters means the function which are used to get the getters for id name and price so that's it so please do this and also share me the code on the chat a sample is there like this is one sample for employee you have to take you have to work on the same lines there will be very very strong similarity then there will be a fifth part of the problem the fifth part i will discuss later so please start on the first four points and let me know on chat if you are facing any difficulty i think it should take uh, not more than 3 to 4 3 4 minutes like that right quickly write it in any text editor or anywhere you can implement it okay so i have got uh, uh, one comment from karan so let's see so this is the code of karan uh, so one thing is i suggest uh, to use item with capital i not a mandatory it's not functional requirement it's just a convention you will see most of the time def in itself and use the member variables in the smaller cases and this you're doing from your phone ah i can understand that will be difficult yeah and uh, name is equal to na uh, not age basically we have got price so you use price minus 1 yeah this looks fine use a colon after def then self dot id okay you were using that that's fine okay so i think i think you are getting it the modifications i'm making making and self dot price okay ah this looks fine then uh, this is a constructor as a, as a required then get id uh, we use camel case so i capital g is small and then we return the self dot id good and then we use uh, get name right so use n as capital okay so this is fine and then we are using get age no it is not the age of the item it's basically the price of the item so we return self dot price and then you are creating item object and uh, that's there okay so santosh has given me a code and that looks nice pretty well get id get age get price that's right item name is this uh, okay yeah so santosh i got your code it looks fine uh, we can create an object something like this uh, we use camel case like item object one is equal to item item name is percentage d no item name is a string percentage s or basically you would like to use item id is percentage d name is a percentage s and uh, price is percentage uh, f it's a float okay so price can be decimal as well and then we can give item object dot get id right and then you can get the name and price as well
okay so i'm going to execute this run this on my uh, python console in well let's say oh sorry get price okay so the item has been created now you can see my screen if i type item you will see that item is basically a class inside our main dot item is the name of the uh, class then we create an object and then if you want to print the object is created with default uh, what's that get id item object has no attribute id self dot id self dot name self dot price hmm. okay oh sorry it's not int it's uh, in it the constructor name was not correct so you see the item id is minus 1 name is na price is minus 1 well that is what was expected now if you make item object is equal to new item you give the id as 1 name as uh, uh, toothpaste and price as 10 and now if you print the content you will get the item id is one name is toothpaste and price is 10 like this so this is what i wanted all the four things have been implemented except for the last one now I, if you would like to see if i do something like print and i do like item object one let's see what happens if i print the object this will display the location of the object in the memory this is the item object and this is the location in the memory or basically this is the ram location where the object is present now uh, what i want to do is we have got item object and every object has got name every object has got id and every object has got price as well so for every object these three things should be displayed whenever like i want to do something like this whenever i want to print the item object say item object one i should get something like this item id is equal to whatever is the id item name is equal to whatever is the name and price is equal to whatever is the price and this is fairly simple what happens is there is a method called as underscore underscore str underscore underscore this is a method which returns a string so what we can do is we can create this method inside the class and the return can be like this item id is equal to percentage d name is equal to percentage s price is equal to percentage f and then we can substitute the parameters like self dot id self dot name and self dot price what is this basically this is ultimately your string which will be returned whenever you call the print over the object and hence you will be printing all these content let me show you what i mean 
here i am going to add one function called as underscore underscore str underscore underscore and then i will pass self as an argument and you you know you need not to pass self it is automatically passed internally so here we will be returning item id is equal to percentage d name is equal to percentage s okay like this and let us create this class again and now if we create any item object like this and if we do print of this item object you see you are getting item id is equal to this name is equal to this and price is equal to this so that also becomes quite convenient if you want to print the content of uh, any object so please try this part as well include i'm going to paste uh, i'm going to create one more item object okay so i'm going to paste this on your on the chat and you can certainly try this now uh, i will talk about one other uh, important concept that is uh, uh, related to uh, inheritance what happens in inheritance is a class can inherit other class as well so what i'm going to do is suppose you create a class called as calculator and uh, inside the class we create a function called as add where we are going to add two numbers x and y and uh, it will be return x plus y now we create another class called as scientific calculator like sign psych calculator and this class is inheriting the calculator class so this is the syntax now what is inheritance i will talk about that first of all we all know that there is a class this class can have some member variables and it can have some functions called as methods if you create a new class that inherits the previous class it simply means your uh, this new class will have the access to the functions of base class so this is the base class or the parent class or technically it is also called super class so basically these are all the same name and this is your child class or it is also called as sub class so in our example this calculator is your base class and scientific calculator is your sub class so this class has got add function and this class has got a square function so if you create an object of scientific calculator suppose this is your object of scientific calculator class this will have both it will have add function as well as a square function and uh, there are many other things as well which we will discover but uh, let's try to create a small code to understand the concept of inheritance so we create a class called as calculator and we have a function 
called as add it will take two arguments and it will return x plus y now we create one more class called as scientific calculator and this is extending or inheriting the calculator class and it has got a function called as a square which will take one argument and it will return the uh, square of that number now if you create like a, a calculator object is equal to and scientific calculator object then on the calculator object you can perform only add operation like dot add of three and four like this but on the scientific calculator you can perform add operation like uh, three and four as well as you can perform a square operation the, both the functions are available so let's try to uh, run these things in the python shell you see if you perform add operation oh sorry uh, add oh sorry my bad actually we have to provide the self reference as the first argument because these are not functions these are methods and methods are functions inside classes so they need the first argument as the self reference so if you perform c on the calculator object if you add 3 and 4 you will get 7 that's that's logical but on the scientific calculator you can perform add operation or you can perform a square operation on the calculator object if you try to perform the square operation it will fail because the function is not a part you see this calculator object has no attribute called as a square and this yeah this is it it has no attribute called as a square so this is one point about inheritance how you can extend the functionality of one class into a new class in the coming session which is the final session of python we will discover about modules multiple inheritance and file handling uh, we'll also talk about abstract classes that's that's there so today's session was majorly focused to give an introduction to the object oriented programming in python in python you can create classes and objects you can have functions member variables you can have constructors you can have inheritance you can have a, a constructor with default arguments as well see str is like the string representation of the object if you want individual if you want to access only the name or only the price the individual getters are helpful or they are used this is the complete representation of the all the data of the object you can customize the str you you want to print only the id or name you don't want the price that is possible but if you want access to only the price then getters are quite encouraged way because you want individual component you want only id then you can use get id you want the complete representation of the object you can simply print the object right so it depends on use so yes still you will need getters to access individual members okay so that is all uh, from my end for the day uh, please practice and have a good week ahead.